Master has relayed my situation to you, I take it. Oh? How did you know? I'd intended to wait until you came back before going to sleep, but I didn't hear you come in. I was worried that something may have happened to you, so I went outside to check and caught sight of my master. On top of this, you have been acting very strangely around me this morning, causing me to suspect that my master must have told you everything about me. After all, Master is... very talkative. <laughs> Sorry, Shenhua. Paimon had you down as an adeptus this whole time, but it turns out Paimon was wrong. It's okay. I don't mind. The fault is mine for not explaining everything to you sooner, because in my experience, trying to explain is a futile pursuit. Still... Though you mistook me for an adeptus, you never treated me as distant and unapproachable. Instead, you treated me as you would a friend. For this, I am very grateful indeed. To be fair, we've met our fair share of real adepti, too. Anyway, now it's settled. From now on, you're our friend! Whether you're an adeptus or a human isn't the important thing. First and foremost, we're just plain old friends! Got it. Although I don't know quite what it entails in terms of what I have to do, I must say I like the title, Friend, very much indeed. Great! Well, now that we're all rested up, we should start searching for the other two items on the list. But before we do that, let's go to the building site and ask Ningwang's little helper how the progress is going. After all, Sunset Vermilionite is so rare. Paimon doubts many competitors will really be able to find any. If it turns out some of them have given up already, we'll be able to take things a little more slowly. Oh, and another thing. We bought some grilled chicken drumsticks on the way back last night. There was a place just outside. Here's one for you, Shenhua. Try it! They're so good. I concur. It has a rich flavor, far more agreeable than those I've cooked for myself in the wilderness in the past. Something. That's because it's not finished. Hey, Byron! And hey, Beto! And hey! Um, person Byron doesn't know? Given the enormous scale of the Jade Chamber, we split the construction work into two phases to make sure the structure remains balanced. Before we find some suitable plostrite, we build the Jade Chamber's keel at ground level. Once the plostrite is ready, we place it into the keel and let the partially constructed jade chamber rise up to the height of the surrounding mountain peaks. The remainder of the construction work is then carried out at that altitude. Once everything is ready, we release the iron tethers and allow the jade chamber to rise to its target altitude. Miss Bywin, we've brought some new materials to submit. One moment, I'll be right there. The construction work has only been able to progress this rapidly thanks to the plostrite provided by you. Lady Ningguang is most grateful and looks forward to seeing more of your work. Wow, can't believe you sourced the plostrite so quickly. It's the key piece of the puzzle. Looks like you beat us to the punch. Beto, you're joining the Jade Chamber Contest too? <laughs> sure am. I happened to get my hands on a chunk of Sunset Vermilionite on a voyage a while back, so I figured I'd bring it over. Huh. So even though it's rare, we're not the only ones who managed to get a hold of it. Oh, I've got some introductions to do. This is the renowned Miss Yun, or Yun Jin, probably the most famous figure in the Liyue opera scene. Greetings. These two are Paimon and the Traveler, both good buddies of mine. And this is, um, 
sorry, I'm um, not sure we've met. Shenhe. I am there. Friend. <laughs> Good to meet you. A friend of a friend is my friend too. Or, as I like to say, a mate of a crewmate is part of the crew. Miss Yun is also here for the contest. Turns out she needed to borrow a boat, so we came together. It's an honor to finally meet you both. I've heard much about you. Miss Shenhe, though we are only meeting for the first time, I have a feeling that we will get along very well indeed. To be honest with you all, I am in great need of this opportunity to ask Lady Ningguang a question. That's why I joined the contest. Thanks to my father's connections, I was able to acquire a specimen of the plostrite required. Fortunately, it was approved for submission, despite being a little on the diminutive side. Wow! So it looks like the three of us are competitors now! Excuse me for prying, Miss Shenhe, but are you competing as well? No, I don't have any questions for Ningguang. I just wanted to help him win. In that case, I have a proposal to make. Lady Ningguang said that the first three contestants to procure all three materials will be awarded the chance to ask a question. Well, there are three teams here. We can split the prize between us. Instead of competing against each other, we could work together to secure the top three places between us. What do you think? Sounds great, but how does that change things exactly? <laughs> I think I see where you're going with this, Miss Yoon. The plostrite was the most difficult item to source by a long shot. Luckily, all three of us managed to get our hands on it. The two remaining items aren't quite so rare, so as long as one of us finds a way to source it, the other two can hop on the bandwagon. How'd I do? Is that what you had in mind? Precisely. Huh. Interesting approach. Okay then. All right. I'll go first. I have some leads on these wonder cores. From what I've heard, the core itself is really not that difficult to make. The hard part is getting hold of the ore used as raw materials. I'm gonna head back to the ship and ask Su Ling if he's heard of them. You guys... We will head into town and seek advice from Master Zhang of Hanfeng's Ironmongers. Thoughts? Wonderful. We'll split into teams then, and whoever makes progress first brings all of us a step closer to victory. I'm gonna take off. See you later! Okay, let's go! By the way, what question are you gonna ask Ningguang Yunjin? I'm looking for a venue to host the performance of our new opera. Lady Ningguang has excellent judgment, so I would like to hear her opinion. Ooh, what's the opera called? Paima wants to go see it! The opera is a labor of love by my father. He wrote it based on a popular urban legend about an evil spirit and an adeptus. It's called The Divine Damsel of Devastation. Hello. Are you here for something off the shelf, or do you need something forged? Excuse me, Master Zhang. We were wondering if you'd heard of something called a Wonder Core. Of course I have. Sorry, um, who's asking? My name is Yunjin. Perhaps you don't know me, but I believe that you forged some weaponry for my father in the past for stage use. Yunjin? Stage use? Oh! So, you must be Miss Yoon. <clears throat> Sorry. My brain's finally caught up. 
not used to doing much beyond bashing a hammer all day. <laughs> Everyone's heard of you, Miss Yoon, even folks who don't make it to the opera all that often. <laughs> like myself. So, you're here to ask about wonder cores, huh? As it happens, I do know how to make them. Matter of fact, I made some for Lady Ningguang back when she was building the original Jade Chamber. The types of ore needed to make wonder cores are a little hard to come by. Lady Ningguang supplied them herself last time. I don't suppose you've brought any yourselves? No, we were gonna ask you what kinds of ore we need. <laughs> sure. Well, you'll need two kinds. Star Splinter Iron and Subrosium. If I remember correctly, Lady Ningguang sourced her Star Splinter Iron from the Mount Tianhung area. They say it resonates with visions. It could take some work, but if you stick with it, you'll find some eventually. As for the Subrosium, though, hmm, that's trickier. It's all but unheard of on the market. Uh, I'm really not sure. Sorry. What I've heard is that the people around Mount Tianhung have some sort of magic trick that can pinpoint the location of this stuff. Of course, it's probably just hearsay. If you want my advice, start by looking for Star Splinter Iron around Mount Tianhung. And if you run into any locals, ask them a few questions about Subrosium. Mount Tianhung. Interestingly enough, the story of the Divine Damsel of Devastation also takes place on that mountain. I hear the view there is quite spectacular. A favorite destination of the Adepti, in fact. Perhaps it can give me some inspiration. Let's not delay. We should head straight there. schedule. I came to Mount Tianung once with my father as a child. I remember it being such a long climb that I could barely feel my legs by the time we reached the top. <laughs> this is quite a trip down memory lane for me. Look at these majestic towering peaks and the gently flowing streams. It's like setting foot in paradise. No wonder the legend of the Divine Damsel of Devastation is said to have taken place here. Adepti wander oft where mortals seldom stride. Indeed, this looks like a place that one might expect to be frequented by Adepti. The Divine Damsel of Devastation is your upcoming opera, right? And the story takes place in Mount Tianhung. Huh. Seems like you have a real connection with this place. What's the story about, though? It's the story of a girl becoming a hero. Cool! A hero story? They're Paimon's favorite! The legend first arose in this area. It is said that there used to be a prosperous village on the mountain. In that village, there was a loving couple who were completely devoted to one another. One day, a terrifying monster appeared. The wife was out collecting herbs and was captured by the monster. Her husband was so distraught at the news that it broke his spirit and drove him to madness. The vile and vicious monster told the villagers, If you want to live, you must sacrifice a child to me. What a nasty piece of work! Ugh, Paimon sure hopes this monster gets put in its place! But the monster was so terrible and so strong that all within the village were terrified of it. They had no choice but to give in to the monster's demand. Just while they were discussing whose child would be given over to the monster, a little girl suddenly stood up and came forward. No! Don't do it, little girl! Unbeknownst to anybody else, she was concealing an exorcist's blade. She approached the monster's lair, feigning fear and trepidation. 
When she finally arrived, she courageously drew her sword and entered into a fierce struggle with the monster, from which she eventually emerged as the victor. Her extraordinary abilities drew the attention of the Adepti, and they took her as one of their own. Her story became the stuff of legends. But alas, the paths of mortals and Adepti seldom cross, and she would never again re-enter the mortal world. And so, destined to grace the mortal realm for but a brief moment, she vanished like a wisp of smoke into thin air. <laughs> I really like this story. But I personally think that perhaps the little girl was... not as brave as the opera makes her out to be. I'm not sure she deserves all the praise she is given. Hmm, I've never considered that before. Opera is always an interpretation of the events it purports to portray. A certain degree of deviation from the truth is always inevitable. When my father wrote the script for this play, I suppose his intention was to inspire his audience with the character of the Divine Damsel. Hmm. I think it's a great story. The ideal story. Well, it sure inspired Paimon! Let's go get ourselves some Star Splinter Iron! Yeah! Body, healthy mind. Perhaps whoever left these behind was also fulfilling a contract. village on our way here. Master Zhang said we should ask the locals for help. Why don't we try there? Hey! There really is someone here! Yunjin, looks like you were right! Excuse us, sir. Can we ask you something? Sir, we were just passing by and wanted to ask if you happen to know anything about Sabrosium. <sighs> Is he trying to tell us to look for clues in the village? Well, whatever. Guess we're on our own here. Shenhua, Yunjin, let's have a look around. Sorry, you can go ahead without me. I'd like to have a word with this gentleman. If that's okay with you, Uncle Mingjin. It's... It's... Shen He. Shen He. You're alive. The rumors were true. So, all these years? I'm sorry, I don't know how to find Sabrosium. But I think you can find some information in the village. This place is deserted now. No one ever comes here. 
so you can rummage around all you want. Huh? You know this guy, Shenhua? Uh... Thank you, kind sir. We'll go and take a look around. Don't worry. Mingjun has no ill intention towards Miss Shenhe. She'll be quite safe. Okay. Then let's see what we can find in this village. So, Shenha is the Divine Damsel? Now that I think about it, she does behave rather like an Adeptus, and she is about the right age. So that's why I've been getting the strangest feeling whenever I chat with her. I should have noticed it earlier. According to this text, the Divine Damsel from the Opera was actually the daughter of the loving couple. And... She didn't volunteer. She was... sacrificed to the monster. By her own father. Oh. The truth is even more lamentable than the opera. Now I understand why Shenhe said the girl was not as brave as people think. It wasn't her choice to enter that ghastly situation. She was forced into it. Oh. It looks like my father may need to make a few revisions to his beloved opera. So it seems that Shen He's father thought he was summoning a benevolent deity using a magic incantation. But in fact, he summoned an evil god's remains, which took the form of a monster. His obsessive yearning for his deceased wife led to a terrible tragedy. The villagers moved away in fear, without ever learning the truth. And now, this place is deserted. Still... I do wonder what the connection is between Shenhe and Mingjun. Hey, we've looked everywhere, but still no mention of Sabrosium. Let's have a look over there.
So basically, we need to go to the middle of the lake south of Mount Tianhong at dusk, and we'll find us some Sabrosium! Let's go back and tell Shenhua the news! One year when I was back visiting, I heard a story about a white-haired adeptist from a merchant passing by. I never imagined it was you. I was a very close friend of your father's. I could have stopped him from performing the summoning ritual. I had plenty of chances, but I couldn't bring myself to stand up to him. I just let things happen, let it all escalate. And, well, we all know how that story ended. I bring flowers back here every year. And each time I wish I had a chance to apologize to you. Apologize for what? If you'd stopped him, he'd only have found another way. There is nothing he wouldn't have done for his true love. Nothing. Do you still... hate him? I don't know what I feel. I'm told my fate is to bear the curse of calamity, so my master bound my soul with red ropes to curb my aggression. But... It also dampened my emotions, making me dispassionate, like the Adepti. So if you ask me how I feel about the past, if I hate my father or not, the truth is, I feel nothing at all. It must have been so tough for you all these years. Shenha! We're back! Oh, then I will leave you all in peace. Shenha... It brings me some solace knowing that you are okay. I'll tell you more about the old times next time we meet. Thanks, mister. We found some info in the end. Shenhua, look. This tells us how to find Sabrosium. All we gotta do is go to the middle of that lake. Hmm. Let's go then. Uh, Miss Shenha, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Just now, in the village, we found your father's diary. It turns out that many of the details in the Divine Damsel of Devastation are not true to the facts, so I'd like to change them. Why? I know I say that opera always deviates from the truth, but now that the main character is standing right here in front of me, I cannot simply dismiss your lived experience in favor of my father's fiction. It's okay. I like your version. B uh, huh? My master once said that the day I learn how to use my strength for the good of others is the day that I can truly become part of human society. So... I hope that one day, I might be brave enough to stand up and protect others, just like the girl in the opera. But I've never thought this way before, and I wonder whether I will continue to think in this way. Don't worry. I believe you will. In fact, I think maybe you've already started to become the person you aspire to be. You just haven't had the opportunity to see it for yourself yet. Shenhua! Yinjin! Cut the chit-chat! Let's go! We can't let someone else beat us to it!
made any progress. This is some top quality ore you found. I think I'll get a good end product out of these. Guess now it's my time to shine. Hey everyone, how's the A-Team doing? I ran into a bit of a brick wall on my end. Suling's never seen a Wonder Core before, and says it'd take a lot of research for him to get up to speed. Leave the Wonder Cores to me. I'll work on them while you go about your business. Don't worry. <laughs> it won't take me too long. Much obliged, Master Zhang. We should look into the Adepti sigils next, but where should we find items relating to the Adepti? I'll sort that out. Oh? Uh, you got this then? Yes. I have been training with the Adepti for years. I know a thing or two about making sigils. When we first met, I told you I came for the Jade Chamber, not the contest. In fact, I came specifically to deliver Adepti sigils. Master heard that Ning Wang was planning to rebuild the Jade Chamber, so she sent me to deliver some Adepti sigils to her. Master also said she hoped that I can take this opportunity to rejoin human society. But now that I'm here, I wonder if I've been removed from the world for too long. There's so much basic knowledge that I lack. Maybe it won't work for me to stay here after all. But either way, I'm very glad to have met you, and I'll take care of those adept eye sigils. Without knowing the ins and outs of your situation, I can't say whether you should stay or not. But now that our paths have crossed, we'll always have a connection. So if you're ever feeling down, come find me on my ship. There'll be a drink waiting for you. Thank you. So, Master Zhang, I'll need to use your facilities to make the sigils. Fine by me. I'm actually curious to see how the Adepti arts work. Maybe I'll learn something. Whew. The sigils are ready. Though they are in some respects inferior to my masters, I can assure you there will be no quality issues. I've finished forging the things you asked for, too. Great! Let's go submit them before someone else gets there ahead of us!
Already? All three of you found them together. Okay, I see. The Wonder Cores and Adepti Sigils look good. It seems that we found our winners. I hereby announce that the winners of this material procurement contest are the Traveler, Yunjin, and Beidou. What? It's over already? I haven't even found the plus strike yet! Oh, I can't believe it. Uh, so close, but so far. I'd like to invite our three winners to please proceed to the Jade Chamber, where Lady Ningguang is waiting for you. Huh? Where's Beidou? She was right here! Captain Beidou has some business to attend to. She will join later. Please come with me for now. Alright then, guess we'll head on up to the Jade Chamber first! This has been a long time coming. The last time we went up to the Jade Chamber was ages ago! Combine the Adepti sigils with the Wonder Cores and insert them into the Jade Chamber's control compartment. The construction of the new Jade Chamber is now officially complete. Once the tethers are released, it will soar into the sky. Thank you all for your work. Now it is time for me to fulfill my promise. Yeah! Miss Yun, I've already heard something about the reason for your involvement. You are looking for a venue for your new opera, aren't you? That's right. Lady Ningguang, I would like to hear your opinion. The unveiling of Miss Yun's grand new opera surely requires a venue of equal grandeur. So what would you say if I proposed that we stage your first performance right here, in the newly built Jade Chamber? The Jade Chamber offers a splendid panoramic view of the mountains and the bustling city. It is fitting for the finest performance to be hosted in the heavens. I can think of no better stage for you than here, Miss Yun. <sighs> Thank you, Lady Ningguang. Then I will prepare my props and other articles shortly. Please allow me to bring all these aboard the Jade Chamber. You're quite welcome. It's truly what a good opera deserves. Oh, a traveler, Shenhe, Paimon, I'll be leaving now. Do come and see my play when the time comes. You're next. What is your question? I should clarify. I do not know your sister's whereabouts. Please. Don't waste your question on this matter. Wow, you're a mind reader, Ningguang. Oh well, guess Paimon will ask a question then. Managing a successful business is not as simple as you might think. Capital, connections, sensitivity to the trends, and instinct for what is a good opportunity. All of these traits are crucial. If you want to know how to make money, I will honor our agreement and give you an answer, but that is not to say that it will work for you. Wow, Paimon hadn't even asked the question yet! Your question was written all over your face. Now look, you helped me rebuild the Jade Chamber, and I intend to repay you handsomely for it. So I promise you that should you one day require financial assistance, you may seek employment here. I will pay you at the highest rate of remuneration. Oh, great! So next time we run out of Mora, we just need to come to Ningguang? No more questions from us. Shenha, you got a question? Me? Yes, this is a group effort. Thank you, but I don't have anything to ask. Are you sure? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I'd urge you not to squander it. Yeah, just don't waste it. Uh, hold on a second. Paimon can probably think of another one. Lady Ningguang, 
Do you think I can ever fit in in Liyue Harbor? Now that is an interesting question. Liyue Harbor is very inclusive. As long as you respect the rules here, you will not be turned away. So, the key is whether or not you yourself can develop a sense of belonging in Liyue Harbor. Huh. A sense of belonging? Yes. To become fond of a place, to feel part of it, it always requires a reason. Perhaps someone you've met, or something you've experienced here. Or perhaps you enjoy the atmosphere of Liyue, and you will become accustomed to it. In short, everyone needs a reason to stay. I hope you can find yours soon. Huh. I see. Hey, what's going on? I just went to see the fleet I'm a little later than expected. Come on, Beidou! It's your turn! Do you have a question for Ningguang? Me? <laughs> nah, I ain't got any questions. She forced me to help out, so I figured I may as well get involved with the contest. Ningguang, don't forget what we talked about. It's not gonna be easy to deal with. I don't think my fleet can take it on their own. Don't worry. I have made preparations. The wound dressings are ready, and the Millilith have set up an ambush. <sighs> Glad to hear it. Watch your back. Stay alert. Beto? Ningguang, what are you talking about? You'll see when the Jade Chamber ascends. However, it's not the most pleasant topic of conversation. Maybe it's better that you don't know. When I first set foot in the Jade Chamber, I stood at the edge of the platform and looked down upon Liyue Harbor far below. At that time, I dreamed that one day the Jade Chamber's shadow would be seen in all seven nations of Tevat. My wish has not changed to this very day. However, it is not only out of consideration for myself that I have built the Jade Chamber anew at this time. I hope the Jade Chamber will always float in the skies above Liyue Harbor, bearing witness to the prosperity and peace of the human world. And I hope that you can all witness it with me. Let the Ascension Ceremony commence! The Avenger of the Vortex, by Sht. Who is that? Osile's wife. Final follower of the Overlord of the Vortex. Sounds like you knew this was coming! Beto sensed something was stirring in the deep. She warned me months ago. Knowing she harbors hatred toward the Jade Chamber, I chose to rebuild it now as a way of drawing her out. Got it! Well, <clears throat> let's go fetch the Adepti! No. Huh? In this human age, the people of Liyue must find a way to overcome this crisis on our strength alone!
You are a cursed child. Your life brings nothing but disaster to us all. At least if you die, I can bring her back. The day you learn how to use your strength for the good of others is the day that you can truly become part of human society. What are you doing here? I can't let you be the only one taking this risk! I hardly see this as a great risk. The people of Liyue Harbor are well prepared, and she is already badly injured. Only sheer willpower is keeping her alive. I may be nearing the end of my stamina, but in a fight to the death, I think I have the upper hand. Don't get 
to close. Unleash. Got a dash. This place is unstable. It is too risky to continue pursuing her. If the place collapsed, the consequences would be disastrous. Let's head back. <sighs> I'm just a little exhausted. Otherwise, fine. I wanted to deal with it myself. I didn't expect you to follow me. Don't worry. She's not coming back anytime soon. After an injury like that, she'll likely seek refuge somewhere else. How did things go underwater? It's been dealt with. She was injured before entering the water. It didn't take too much effort to finish the job. Good. So the crisis has been safely averted. When you visit the Jade Chamber in the future, you will be afforded generous treatment. Lady Ningguang, the fleet reports that the sea monster has left Guyan Stone Forest and the surrounding waters have returned to normal. Thank you. How are the Millilith? Thanks to the medical supplies you prepared and Lady Keqing's command, our losses were minimal. Of course, we owe huge thanks to this young lady for her help. On behalf of the entire Millilith, thank you for your service. I... Uh... Great. The next time I watch Miss Yun's opera, I'll be able to take the compliments. I wasn't trying to be a hero, though. I just wanted to protect you. Let the soldiers recuperate, but don't let your guard down. If she returns with a vengeance, we must be prepared. Yes, ma'am. You've been monitoring us for some time now. I trust you've reached a conclusion. Hmm. You wish to hear one's opinion. Well, things would have hardly gone so smoothly had it not been for Shen He. That I do not deny. However, final victory was always going to be ours even had things been a little more arduous. If it came to it, I could always destroy another Jade Chamber. One has observed your adaptation of the Guizhong Ballista, and find oneself compelled to admit that you have evidenced some degree of novel thinking. You have learned from past failures and prepared for this crisis in advance. This is considerable progress compared to the last time. Hence, on balance, one finds your performance during this trial satisfactory enough. But there will no doubt be further trials to come in the future. Do not suppose that one will not continue observing you hereafter. While the position of Tianchuan remains mine, I will always ensure Liyue's safety. Shen He, one saw you secretly venture out from the mountains a few years ago and notice the air of dejection in which you returned. Hopefully this trip to Liyue Harbor has been a different experience. Yes. I can't explain it, but... I feel happier than I expected. Hmm. Good. Traveler, please take good care of Shen He. She is a dear child. In fact, one has many fond memories of Shen He's childhood that she may be interested to hear about. There'll be no need for that. Oh. Hm. They are all like this. Fine. Since you care not to listen, one shan't be telling you. One shall be going homeward now. Please. Have a good rest. Come to the Jade Chamber when you have recovered your energy. We must celebrate both the completion of the Jade Chamber and the fact that Liyue has weathered another crisis. This banquet must be the most spectacular ever.
Amazing! All of you here are my distinguished guests. I am determined that each of you thoroughly enjoys yourself. Those who don't drink alcohol, please, help yourself to other beverages. Fine wine is a delight to the senses, but it is far from the only one. I trust you will find the marvelous view from the Jade Chamber to be an equally gratifying indulgence. Have you heard? Miss Yun's going to be performing today. Sure have. Honestly, it's the main reason I'm here. I've never missed any of Ms. Yun's performances, and I don't intend to start now. I hear she's going to perform The Divine Damsel of Devastation today, the one written by her father. I've been so excited that I've barely slept the last few nights. Hey, look! Ms. Yun is going on stage! What did you think? Personally, I thought I sang rather well. It was beautiful! Paimon wants to learn too! It was wonderful. Also, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks to you, the Divine Damsel of Devastation is a more nuanced tale than ever. The play has an ending, but life goes on. I believe you will find a way to fit in in Li Yue Harbor. Thank you. I think I've found the opportunity I needed to change. Ms. Yun! <laughs> Here you are! Great to see you! Huh? Hey, this young lady with the white hair looks like some kind of VIP. Yeah, that's it, like an adeptus. 
Wait, you're the girl from the opera, aren't you? The divine damsel herself. And look who else we have here, the illustrious traveler. Well, I'll be. <clears throat> this was definitely worth showing up for. Let me pull up a chair, all right. We'll all have a friendly chat, get better acquainted. <sighs> Alternatively, you could leave us alone. That is, if you'd prefer to finish your drink via the orifice of your own choice. Uh-oh, this feels all too familiar. Shenhe's back to her old self again. Hey, what are you doing? Calm down, Shenhe. Calm down. 